they we we get little little journeys, little ideas from people and they're saying oh, there's cannons down in the moat. Does this behind me? Does this over there? Did you know this? And when I was a little lad or a little girl, we found this. And at first, it's very easy for us as archaeologists to sort of sort of discount that as just sort of folklore. But actually, as the weeks have gone on, we've found that these stories keep repeating themselves, and there's an element of truth comes towards some of it. It's helped us understand. That, say, for instance, we were told. We believed that there was a tennis court on here, and this has taken away a lot of the archaeology. And I found out today that the tennis court is not on here, the tennis court is over there, off the mound, beyond the ditch. And actually, they've just taken material from here to help build that tennis court. So, actually, if us as archaeologists had gone down and walked, you could actually see the tennis court. It's safe to see just about. So, a little journey there, you know, and it just goes to show talking to the, the local people who've got an understanding of you know, memories that go back at least 40, 50 years. We're learning from them as well. So I'm up to about five cannons now that's in the moat. Which I'd love to find one of them at least, but they're all over the place apparently. Every day we have cannon. It's really great. We've been tasked with the job of finding out here. Ar archaeology survives on this mound that we're, we're sitting on here today. It's a, quite a substantial mound. It's believed to be a medieval mot, as in a mot and baby castle. And we know that there's been successive things going on afterwards. So our main task all around us is a lot of disturbance, a lot of modern erosion, a little bit of vandalism, you could say. And it's to see whether there is still archaeology here that survives and things have to. We know for sure from evidence, records that were written down in the post medieval period and in the 1640s during the English Civil War, this mound was re-fortified. So the good clue there, so it's already here, so it predates the, the English Civil War and it's re-fortified by parliamentarian troops. They're certainly defending this approach. There's no defences on this side. The River Seven is over there. Defends all of the town over on that side. But this is part of the town is wide open on this approach. So this mound is here. Good place to re-fortify the wall. Um, what's happened after that period? We're not sure. So, we've arrived on site, we've got three trenches set around us here, um, some smaller, the, the one behind me is mainly our main trench that's targeting the biggest area on the mound. Um, so we, we, as we've gone around through these trenches we're discovering that there's a lot of later material on top of the original mound construction material, so we're quite surprised by that and pleased by that because that means that the archaeology still survives underneath to some degree. We've already had little hints in one of the smaller trenches behind you, towards the, top of the river over there, where we can see post holes set into the ground there, underneath all the Victorian and Georgian rubbish. So we know we've got stuff to go at, something structural, it's looking medieval. Behind me in the big trench, we're seeing just glimpses of the same thing there. So clear targets to head for. And as we're taking all this rubbish away, all our modern materials disappear. Uh, and the positive from that is that it's sealed the archaeology that we're after. Yeah. You seal it with a lead and then send it off to the market. Okay. Kind of well, isn't that lovely? Yeah. Mm, that's great. Oh. That's lovely. Really good. So, through our journey of taking all this material off that we've, over the last few days, um, even though we've now come to see that that is sort of post-Georgian, Victorian, even later to be honest, um, there's a, there are little hints of things that's in amongst this that we're quite excited about and quite interested. Now whether um, they are from off this hillside 
let's just put that one aside and just have a look at them. We've got a really nice little pistol shot here, lead pistol shot, which has never been fired in anger. It's just been, it'd be nice to imagine the Civil War soldiers just sitting up here, clipping and casting away. He clips it off, there's a little sprue on top there, um, and then it's just dropped and gone. I've never been fired in anger. I hope I can find that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find it. Yeah. It's okay. We'll Got get it. Um, uh, on a similar, uh, similar interest, there's this tiny little disc here. At first, we thought it was possibly a lead bag seal. They're used a bit like wax seals on letters um, it's to prove that uh, items that are in going for trade have been tampered with. They're on the bags and they're melted off. Having said all that to you, now we think it's not a bag seal and it's possibly a token now. They issue tokens during the Civil War and in towns as well, during times of shortage of coinage. So we're going to look into that. That's going to be quite neat. Uh, it's a very simple one. A little bit more work now to find out what that's about. And then probably the really nicest find we've had is what appears to be a bit of fragmented brick. We've had bucket loads of brick from over there. and. You turn it over, we didn't miss this, and we just caught it in time. And we've got this lovely patterned tile, fragment of a tile, which would have been a carpet tile, lots of them set into a floor. And this is actually looking at it, and based on the, just we'll do a little bit more research on this, but we think it's early 14th century. There are similar ones on the floors of Strata, Florida, so quite excited about that. Where that's come from. We've no idea. Maybe it's come from St Mary's Church over on the side of Newtown. Um, how it's found itself on here, I don't know, but it's got our interest, so we'll work with that. So, where does that bring us at the end of the week? End of week one, um, we made excellent progress. We weren't expected to find, we re I mean, in our hearts, we thought, is there going to be any archaeology here underneath all this? I'm, I'm sitting on a, a BMX bike track here at the moment. There was once a castle, possibly. It's in quite a mess. And we've, our three trenches are all showing archaeology. Our smallest trench behind you over there has, we've actually got archaeology that looks medieval. So we're going to next week with things to dig and to take apart, which is great. We never thought we'd be here at this point now and behind me it looks like the same is going to happen over there and I think the biggest thing I've taken out of this whole week is that um, we've never had so many volunteers before we're not short of manpower in fact we could do with more trenches and that's unprecedented in all the time I've worked trust we've never had so many people want to come and work on a site that's great so we're in a good place for next week Crack on. The annual gathering of the Newtown Stone Gallery. <laughs> An elite. Meet.